to Richard Ellison and then the struggle at the end for Embury, Dilly and Edmonds taking up time as well as trying to score runs and uh, only 172 runs scored in the day. Kapildev, the Indian skipper, will be delighted by his own bowling figures there, 4 for 52 and also by the match position which shows India in a very, very strong state at this moment. 134 runs needed to win. They made 341 in their first innings and now they need just that 134 to win and to give Kapil Dev his first victory in the series. And one of the reasons uh, they're in such a good position is to do with those two men there. Maninda Singh on the left and Ravi Shastri on the right. Superb bowling figures from those two. Between them, they bowled 40.4 overs, 20 maidens, and took four wickets for 30. Now, I don't know where you go, and I don't care where you go, you won't find anything better than that, and it's a measure of their superiority that England made only 172 runs today. Was that England had made 294 and 180, 172 all day yesterday, India 341, and they need 134 runs to win on this, the final day. We pick up play now with the third ball of the second over. There's just a leg by on the board for India, and it's Richard Ellison coming into bowl to Sunil Gavaskar. <laughs> what a little blinder. Give that a whack. Just about the perfect Yorker, beautifully pitched right in the block hole, and it needed a very good batsman to keep it out. Deserved that, Graham Dilley. Nicely caught by Gooch. A thoroughly good wicket all round. Good piece of bowling. The ball kept up to the bat. Just enough movement to find the outside edge. And a very well taken catch. Nice movement. Just enough to find the outside edge. Graham Gooch was going up. He got his hands up ooh, to chest height. Then had to bring them down again. But uh, he caught it firmly enough. I'm about to be the non-striker. Ellison will come in from the nursery end and bowl to Gavaskar. It's the frustrating one for England, the one that gets past the outside edge of Gavaskar's bat. Yes, for the first time, uh, Richard Ellison get a little bit of bounce there and just that little bit of movement. And certainly everything was very near to the ball there, but unfortunately for England, just missing that edge of that bat. Nicely timed and placed as well. Gadding, vain chase, no chance of putting that off. Well, Gavasco had been getting a bit tied down and was just fretting a little bit, but he's played this really quite beautifully because uh, the ball was on the up when it came to him. He's waited on it, very good balance, and turned it through the leg side and four. And over the last few days, we've been talking about Sunil Gavaskar's desire to get a century at Lords. I don't think we've been quite fair to him because 
it turns out that this is the first test that he's ever played at Lords. Well, that's the first time that no third man ploy has proved expensive, but uh, throughout the match it's proved pretty expensive for the fielding captains. 24 for one. And now David Gard turns to Pringle from the nursery end. Strong appeal from Pringle. Scar making to clip this on the leg side. That's pitched off stump and it's certainly got through to the pad, which wasn't all that far forward. That was a very fair shout. And I do believe Sonia Gavaska is wearing odd pads. You see the two rolls on the one pad and the knee and three on the other. Oh, that hit him. Did that hit the helmet? Certainly bounced a long way. We're into Amanath and luckily hit on the head. It must have hurt him. Certainly shock. Well, it was certainly pretty short, but it didn't get that high really. Probably just above waist high if the batsman had been uh, stuck. He started trying to watch it, realised he hadn't got low enough and out of the way, and just turned his head away. I think and probably got him towards the back of the head somewhere. Yes, took his eye off the ball, which uh, is easier to criticise from a distance than it is if you're actually out there playing. Mixture of selectors and coaches, Don Wilson, the MCC coach, extreme right, Fred Titmuss, selector, Phil Sharp, Peter May in the background. That's caught. And that's... Definitely out. It was uh, a long stay at the crease by Gavaska. He reached, he played wide at the off stump and was superbly caught. Yes, well, the little master was reluctant to go then, but uh, no doubt about it, almost identical to the first innings. A little bit wide again, and he pushed through it, not really driving hardly, but pushing through, and the ball went between first slip and the keeper, the keeper taking it pretty low down. Dilip Bengsaka. 126 not out in the first innings. Well, it wasn't badly bowled at all. Walker, but just straight outside leg stump. Yes, Graham Billy striving for the leg stump Yorker, which is a perfect delivery to bowl, and he wasn't very far away. He got the length right, just that two or three inches down the leg side. That's an edge. But a profitable one. Because yeah, one thing you don't want when you've only got a handful of runs is the ball to run away off the edge for four. Very exasperating for the England team and the England bowler in particular. Well, oh, that's not a very good sign, is it? John Embury. Yes, well, just watch it when it chased down to third man there and uh, it looked to be just struggling that last yard or two. And uh, there must be something just in the hip, back. They're laughing about it, but... Uh, it could be quite serious if Cozy can't bowl. And it looks like he's in fact going off. And certainly limping a little. No third man. It's whatever they run or whether it reaches the rope, which it won't quite do.
50 for two. Batsman out, Gaviscar 22 and Srikant without scoring. 50 and 110 balls. Graham Dilley is going off the field. Must have sustained some form of injury. David Gower has a problem out there because um, with Dilly having gone off the field and Embury, both of them bowlers from the pavilion end, it's difficult for him to work Edmonds into the attack if he wants to bowl Pringle at the moment. Pringle's coming up from the nursery end. So Ellison is coming on at the pavilion end. Whistled away square of the wicket. And after that boundary, five more runs were added to take the score at lunchtime up to 72 for two. Four of those five, in fact, were leg buys. The position of the game, with Vensaka 28 not out, was that uh, India, at lunch, needed another 62 runs to win. In a very strong position they were at that particular moment. We pick it up now with the first ball at the second over after lunch. One more run has been added to the score. Derek Pringle is the bowler. He's bowling to Dilip Vensaka. Well, a very good line, Pringle. That just moving on leg side, but he's bowled very straight during this match. So Gower, not only defending modest 134 runs, now has to do it with two of his leading bowlers. Dilly, the taker of two wickets in this innings, and John Embury just might have turned the screw on the Indian batsman. Good shout. So Pringle again strikes. Uncomplicated style of simply bowling straight. And Moinda Armanath, who was beginning to struggle more and more, is the victim. Armanath, LBW Bull Pringle for eight, and India are now 76 for three. It's quite a good bouncer that Derek Pringle bowls because it comes out of his natural action. No warning at all to the Batsman. And he catches uh, one or two by surprise. Edmonds to Vingsaka from the nursery end. Bowled him. Beautiful bowling. The ball coming on with the arm. And Vingsaka completely deceived. And there'll be a scampering around in the Indian dressing room. Because from here on in, this match will be won or lost as much in the mind as anywhere else. So the hero of the first innings, Dilip Bengsaka, makes a complete misjudgment. And Phil Edmonds brings the ball on with the arm, through the gate, and over they go. And it's now been confirmed that John Embury was off the field with his back injury for 50 minutes. And... He therefore cannot bowl for 50 minutes. It's the same amount of time off. He has to wait before bowling on. So it's Edmonds again to bowl to Ravi Shastri. Oh, perfectly placed. Lovely footwork. Sweet shot. Uses feet. Really beautiful cricket there by Shastri. Beautiful cricket. A little bit of width there from Phil Edmonds. Too much width, but uh, what a perfect execu execution of the cover drive. Marvellous. Two or three strides there. Beautiful. Right into the shot and head down. Good follow through. Beautiful stroke. 
And that's the 100 up for India. Loss of four wickets. There's another beautifully placed shot by Azaruddin. And you can feel the release of tension among India's supporters. So it's Edmonds again to Shastri. Well now, which one are they going to say is out? We'll have a little chat about it. Mohammad Azruddin is the one who's going to have to go, and the fifth wicket has gone down. Not many runs to play with, just 34. And a big string of batsmen still to come, there's no question about that, including Kapil Dev, the skipper. As this ball goes down to the leg side, beautifully turned the stroke, there's John Embry with the bad back, not perhaps stretching out as best he might. They've taken two, now can he throw with this bad back? Well, he's got a very, very good arm, of course, John, and it's whistled in. Azaruddin wouldn't have made the run anyway, probably, but uh, Shastri has sent him back, and they're both at the same end. It's going to be Edmonds to Capaldale. seemed to me to be a good length well pitched leg well one that went straight on even mm. he got it right in the meat of the bat he's done it again and Gower has no chance of cutting that off two beautiful strokes from Kapil Dev Oh, the captain doesn't seem to have too many nerves here. Beautifully swept. No one's going to get that other than uh, the crowd. Well, we can't keep this man quiet with the slow ball is on. Beautiful sweep stroke, just behind square. And yet another four for a couple of finish a magnificent six from Kapil Dev it's his first test match victory as captain the first time India have beaten England at Lords and it's a great win congratulations from Gower and from the other England players and 18 from that over from Phil Edmonds Kapil Dev taking all of them Ravi Shastri, vice captain and Kapil Dev captain. A moment they'll never forget, walking off at Lords, having shared the winning partnership, 136 for five at the close of the innings. 20 to Shastri and 23 to Kapil Dev. And there is Kapil Dev. The Indian captain must be a very happy man at this moment. Well, I suppose if you're going to go 21 test matches before you win one, you couldn't be any happier than coming to Lords to do it for his first victory. He'll be a very happy man indeed. Looks as though he's been doing that all his life. on the middle balcony and to make the adjudication for the man of the match please welcome that former captain of England and Sussex the fine player Mr Ted Dexter for India there was great batting from Vengsaka 126 not out and 33
there was another amazing and memorable performance. There was a bowler who bowled unluckily for one wicket and 67 runs in the first innings. In the second, the crucial breakthrough, four wickets for 52. My man of the match is the Indian captain, Kapil Dev. It's been a long, long time coming for you as a winning test captain. What a place to do it. I enjoy it. I think it's uh, quite a long time. Well, over two, year, two years I waited for this. What would you like to say now to all your supporters, not just here, but back home in India? This cricket is a game you can't win all the time and you can't lose all the time. Have the selectors said anything to you about your continuing captaincy? Simple answer so far is no. And what inference do you draw from that? I'm guessing the same way as you are. Do you expect to remain as captain? Peter, we're all guessing. We're all guessing. I mean, uh, as I say, it's up to them to make the decision. They haven't They're, spoken to you at all. They haven't mentioned a word. So, I mean, it, it is up to them. Where they are at this precise moment, I hate to think, but uh, they will find out in due course, no doubt. In fact, in due course turned out to be a matter of uh, something like 60 seconds because David Gar was informed he was no longer captain of England that the job had been passed on to Mike Gatting and uh, that he would be skipper for the next two test matches, the one at Headingley against India and against the same country at Edgbaston. The rumours have been flying for quite some time that Gower was on thin ice. It was shown to be so today after India won their first ever test match. At Mike the... Gatting as a skipper, what is your attitude? Well, again, it's, it's very <laughs> difficult to uh, describe on TV, but I think people that actually... Uh, watch the Middlesex games and that um, will know how I do things and I shall just try and do the things I'm used to doing. I shan't be trying to do anything different to what I'm usually doing for Middlesex and uh, I just hope the players respond well. I'm sure they will and let's hope we can get the, the England team back onto the, uh, the level it should be. Well those are certainly admirable sentiments from Mike Gadding and every captain should feel that way when he takes over the job. I've no doubt David Gower felt like that when he became captain of England quite some time ago. Mike Gadding has a big job. He's going to be skipper against India at Headingley and then Edgbaston. And the Indian side are right on top at the moment. They played magnificently in this test match, as is shown by the final scorecard here. 136 for five. They had a couple of hiccups in the end. Kapil Dev, 23 not out, and Ravi Shastri, 20 not out, his vice-captain. Played wonderfully well. And Dilly, two for 28. Pringle a wicket and Edmonds, one. Did all they could to stop them but it was to no avail. A tremendous win for India, their first ever at Lords, and the first one for Kapil Dev as skipper. India beat England in the first Cornhill Test match here at Lords by five wickets. The second Test match,